Hello, I'm Itzhak Perlman. Forty years ago, when I was a young boy learning how to play the violin, I never imagined the day would come when I'd be able to get around in a machine like this. And who would have guessed that if Beethoven were alive today, he could be implanted with a device that might allow him to hear his own music, or that people who had trouble getting around in the real world could learn how to move by traveling in a virtual world. For the next hour, we're going to take you on a tour of the technologies of the future, because, ladies and gentlemen, the future is here. That's the bottom of the world. You're, there it is. You see it? I'm going to go fast. There you go. Up into the sky. Did you see it? Without ever leaving his wheelchair, five-year-old Christopher Cobbs is about to take the trip of his life, zooming through a strange new universe called cyberspace, where everyone is equal, and the only boundaries are the limits of the imagination. Good. You're flying right out the world. Coming in for a landing. You see it? Touchdown, boy. Where did you learn to fly that good? People see it as the best video game going, because it is three-dimensional, it is rather exciting, and uh, you are immersed into another world. I like this game very much. He just says it's an imaginary game within his brain, is what he tells everybody. And he just says it's a lot of fun. He acts like it's a Nintendo game to him, I think. So he, he really likes it. But the high-tech video game Christopher is playing isn't just for fun. Christopher has cerebral palsy, and once a week he and a dozen other children with disabilities come here to the Oregon Research Institute to participate in a unique experiment funded by the Department of Education. Okay, Christopher. The goal is to teach them how to get around in the real world by using the virtual world as their testing ground. I see some mud out there. You see the mud? Oh, you're going to miss it. Turning, turning, turning. Yes, more turning, more turning. You see the mud? Let's go get into the mud. Are you in the mud? Are you all gucky? Oh, we're stuck. You got to keep going till we get out. We're almost out. We're almost out. The program's creator oh, is research scientist Dean Inman. Our goal is to find out whether or not it can do some good, some practical good. Can kids learn to cross the streets safely, safely in a virtual world? Can they learn to use a lift on a bus in a virtual world? Go slow. <gasps> what is that? What was My favorite thing. Your favorite thing. Well, let's back up a little bit. Here, I'll show you. This how is how the virtual like world this. works. Christopher wears a helmet connected to a computer that creates three-dimensional images. When he moves his head or the joystick, the picture moves too. Very good steering. Very good. Instead of being on the outside looking in, Christopher is magically put on the inside looking out. Suddenly he is able to complete tasks he couldn't do in the real world, like maneuvering a motorized wheelchair. He would run into the walls and run into, like, any, any obstacle that was in his way, he would crash into it. He didn't know how to get around it or turn or even stop, for that matter. He just had no idea how this thing even works. Let me see you go backwards. Yes, more backwards. This is good. This is good. And can you stop again? Nicely done. Now can you go fast forward again? Beautiful. Now, do you want to go in the other world for a while and look for things? Yeah. Maybe do a little flying. Would you like that? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the unique problem that we're facing with children is that they haven't yet gotten to a point where they have uh, become addicted to the, uh, the joys of life. They are uh, more like, likely to be passive people. Yeah. Um, they're Not carried from room to room if they can't walk, or they're pushed if they can't drive a chair on their own and uh, they become rather content with that. Um, and they are not quite as um, forceful about wanting to achieve and uh, accomplish uh, life's goals. I, I think that that's a, a unique problem. Oh, that works great. That was great. 
Knowing that discovery holds the key to intellectual development, Inman devised a strategy. He created a series of increasingly complex virtual worlds for the children to explore. Only when Christopher has mastered terrain like mud and ice will he be able to move on to more difficult tasks like crossing the street. So I move up to the button, and I hit the button, and the light changes, and I want to check to make sure there are no cars breaking the law. These are Oregon drivers. And I move straight across as much as I can, and I'm safe. Hopefully they can learn the skills they need to, to move around in the real world, but we can give them extras like the ability to fly, maybe, or to create sculptures by pushing things around in the world. That would give them more motivation to, to want to develop their skills so they could apply them not only to the fun, but to the things that are really important for them to move around in, the, in this world. Now let's look for things. There is something. <gasps> Will you stop, please? Tell me, what is that? A picture. Yeah, of what? What is that? It's taking pictures of you. It's taking, it's a camera taking pictures. I like that. You run into it? Mm -hmm. Can you go around it, please? You're still too close. You have to go around it. That's right. Nicely done. That's beautiful. Now let's see you go again. Anywhere you want. Good. He really likes it. It intrigues him. It pleases him. He laughs. He talks. Uh, and he makes a real effort to explore the world. He wanted to see what was out there. How does it work? Just what is this? Two months after his first foray into the virtual world, the real life test arrives. While Dean Inman is speaking at the Conference and on Virtual Reality in Persons with Disabilities, Christopher Cobbs gets his first motorized wheelchair. For kids who have been passive all of their lives, working, memorizing a space is unknown to them. I wanted to begin developing these concepts. What I want to emphasize is that we evaluate the effects of what we do in terms of what the kid can do in actual reality. That's where the rubber meets the road. It was amazing. He got in it and he just took off in it. It was really exciting because he could do it on his own. So for me, it was just a real kick in the pants, I guess. It was really neat to see him be able to actually get up and go wherever he wanted to go on his own. I got you to like down a hall way and come back and go again and go back. He was confident, he was curious, not daunted in any way. He understood the joystick, he understood the machine. Go this way, you have to go like that, go backwards again, just like that. I know that in the future we'll see kids that'll be much harder to work with, much harder to inspire, but that's part Maybe the major virtue of using the virtual reality is that it's motivating, it's interesting. It's like a cartoon that they can become part of. In that situation, we may see them at their very best. The sooner they get the skills, the sooner we hook them into the joy of freedom, the joy of independent mobility, the more productive they'll be as adults. What we saw in Christopher was the beginning of that joy, and that will be his best teacher in the future.